It's Wellness Wednesdays. It's Wellness Wednesdays, Fucktober edition. Morty's in the co-pilot seat, right, Morty? Morty's very popular. Uh, yeah, so uh, we're going to talk about dealing with betrayal today for obvious reasons. Uh, and a lot, I, a lot of the clients I work with deal with their own issues with betrayal or abandonment. Uh, and this is a teachable moment because I've been down this road a lot. It happens when you need to work with people to get anything of any complexity done. And when you're someone, I, I like mentoring. I like, uh, collaboration. I like working together to make shit happen. Speaking of which... Eileen's aunt's crowdfund. We are getting there. We are up to 40%. That's before the donation um, for the song with Sparkle Muffin, the leftover from the song with Sparkle Muffin re refunds. I'll be announcing that total on Friday. I did last, last, last call uh, on Monday. And I said 48 hours and I'm closing the form. So people have had enough reminders um, uh, there's been like four, uh, well, four mentions, three reminders. Um, but, uh, yeah, you look up dealing with betrayal and, uh, you get bullshit. Like talk with someone you trust. How, how are you trusting when you've just been betrayed, right? The whole deal with betrayal is it makes you wonder who you can trust. That is shit advice right? How do I know if I trust someone right now? Sorry, that was loud. Uh, that's, that's the thing that you need to start with. And then they, this is the Psych Central article, by the way, don't mean to shame them, but this is kind of weak shit. Uh, next one, practice self-care. If Self-care is one of those ruined words, right? Because it's like self-care after betrayal can include eating a balanced meals, getting enough sleep, and engaging as activities that bring you joy. That's self-care all the fucking time, right? Like, consider taking a bath or listening to soothing music. No one needs to be fucking told this. That, that is your daily, I call it emotional nutrition. That is not recovery, right? That That is useless advice. Acknowledge and accept. Uh, accept it. Acceptance. Acceptance is not something you can force. And I find the more you try to force acceptance. Now, there is the whole radical exception. There's two types of acceptance, right? There's accepting that it happened. And denial is part of grief, right? So you can't, you can't force yourself to accept it. And unfortunately, the more you try to force it, the more cognitive overload you get, the more um, dissociation you get. And so you derealize, right? So that's bullshit too. Although it's, it's the right idea eventually, but none of these things are things you can do directly. You have to have a fucking process to get to acceptance. You can't just go, I accept that. It's not that fucking Doctor Who Christmas special. Is like, and we just let it go because it's a female fucking superpower. No, it fucking ain't. Anyway, um, don't blame yourself. Now this, that advice, we're at number four. And finally, that's okay advice. Here's the thing about not blaming yourself. Easier said than done, right? Because it's the whole idea of, I let them too close, I shouldn't have trusted, all that stuff. And that's not true. You're responsible for you. They're responsible for them. You know, you're responsible for you. Did you ignore warning, ignore warning, ignore warning signs? If so, listen to the warning signs next time. Don't blame yourself. It's like, okay, lesson learned. You know, if it was in my case where you flat out said like this thing that you're keeping from me would actually be better. I didn't know it was being kept from me, but this would actually be better. And they still betray you. They still lie. That is on them, not you. 
right? The talking with someone gives you that perspective, but you have to be very, very, very careful uh, in who you talk to, right? Somebody could be totally trustworthy, but not terribly experienced in these things. So it, it is it is very important to let it out somehow. So that's okay. But again, don't blame yourself easier than the den. How do you not blame yourself? Well, if you behave ethically, and if the thing they tried to scold you for was exactly what led to them getting caught, then you did nothing fucking wrong. Next, right? It's stuff like that. That's how not like the the tendency to self-blame comes from a lifetime of gaslighting, right? Probably happened when you were a kid and you have to deprogram that. Um, saying it's not my fault, it's not my fault. All your brain's hearing is my fault, my fault. Did you mean well? Did you do anything vindictive? Were you malicious? Did you act in good faith? Then you did nothing wrong, right? And if someone's trying to guilt and shame you for it, away from them. Right? Makes sense. The next one, we're back to the bad advice. Be patient with yourself. That's easier said than done when you got uh, deadlines and have to have to make money. And that is something that that understanding that some people have to work, some people have to support themselves. People who don't have to do that have trouble understanding that motivator. And that's not their fault, but it can be really hard to be around them at times when you're not at your best. I'd say instead of be patient with yourself, it's like, look, do the bare minimum. The bare minimum is enough when you're wounded, right? Um, number six, give yourself space from the person that betrayed you. Easier said than done on the internet, right? Maybe the person will leave you alone. Maybe they'll try to roast you and destroy your reputation and continue lying about you because that was a problem in the first place, right? Like, it's good advice to ask the people around you to just not talk about them for a while because you don't want to hear it, right? You don't want to hear good. You don't want to hear bad. You just want to forget they exist for a while. Um, but it's still gonna eat at you until you get closure. What is closure? Closure is that thing where that's the tail end of acceptance that, okay, it happened and it's in the past. Closure is about instead of it being present to your brain, it's now past in your brain. It goes from RAM storage to ROM storage, right? Like hard drive, backup storage, not immediately accessible, right? That's closure. That's how it works. It's like this can't hurt me anymore, right? And this is... Number seven was the one I'm like, number seven or number eight on this list, and there's only eight, were the ones I'm like, oh, bullshit. Bullshit. This is the same shit that keeps people stuck. Well-meaning, from Psych Central, from a psychologist, they're doing things that actually just shame people, and here's why. Number seven is practice forgiveness. You're under no requirement to forgive someone, Right? This is what the write-up says, right? When you forgive someone for betraying you, it doesn't mean what they did is okay. Instead, it means you're releasing resentment and choosing personal peace. Forgiveness can help you feel empathy and compassion, positively affecting your well-being. Experts indicate it can decrease blood pressure, lower heart rate, ease anxiety and depression, improve heart health. Forgiving someone also doesn't mean you must let them back in your life. You can forgive someone without rebuilding a relationship with them. Here's the, here's the real truth. This kind of emotional blackmail fucks people up and keep them, keeps them stuck. You are under no requirement to forgive that motherfucker. You're not. You can move on without forgiveness because you know what? Some things are just unforgivable. Some things don't deserve to be forgiven. You can accept that it happened. You can get closure, right? You can go, I'm moving on with my life. 
you may never forgive that motherfucker for fucking your mother, right? Figure of speech, not literal motherfucking. Um, like, that insult makes no sense, does it? Motherfucker? Um, forgiveness, great. If forgiveness helps you, do it. If it doesn't, and you're feeling guilty about not being able to forgive, fuck that. There are, you know, people from childhood. I don't forgive and I never will. And that doesn't mean I can't feel empathy for them. That doesn't mean I can't feel compassion for them. That means recognizing that what they did was unfucking forgivable. You can have empathy for you should have empathy for someone even when you're pissed off at them, even when they fucked up, even when they've done wrong things. And that empathy will stop you from not only going over the line, but also if they start accusing you of a bunch of gaslighty shit, you can go like, look, in their position, would, like, if the roles were reversed, would I think it's wrong? No, no, I wouldn't. You know, I don't expect somebody, if if I'm ignoring someone going, this is bullshit, this is bullshit, this is bullshit, I do so recognize that they could go public with it. You know, they could roast me in public. It's always a risk and you have to accept that. You have to accept the find out if you fuck around, right? I I do not rely on secrets. I don't, and that doesn't mean I don't practice discretion. Obviously, I do. But the empathy, I'd say instead of practice forgiveness, practice empathy. That person who fucked you over is probably not evil. They're just a sad, pathetic, insecure, censored, who hides behind fear because they can't look themselves in the mirror. And this is especially women. It's like, I was scared. So what? Did you do something wrong? Well, deal with your fucking fear then because fear is not always warranted, right? If you're just going to hide behind, I was scared. You're not trustworthy. Because the minute you get scared, you screw over your friends. Next. You don't have to forgive that. You don't have to forgive treason. You don't have to forgive cowardice. You don't have to forgive backstabbing. You don't. Those things, without the person taking steps to make it right, it's very hard to forgive. Because to me, that lack of forgiveness, that's your sense of self-protection, right? It's easy to say forgiving someone also doesn't mean you let them back into your life. That's easy to say. But if that lack of forgiveness is maintaining that boundary of this person is bad for me and needs to go, you hang on to that because you come first. It's only if you start doing things that are self-destructive that you need to go, maybe I need to work on this. And that brings number eight. And number eight jumped out at me because I know somebody who just did sort of a cleansing, cleansing flame ritual that the way this is written like my issue with all these psychology websites like psychology today psych central they're all very white people they're all respectability politics and if you didn't come from one of those communities no you may need to fuck shit up to feel better you might it's not as well that was unnecessary that was uncalled for that was undignified fuck it did it make you feel better do it Number eight is avoid retaliation. And I just think, again, if someone feels the need to tell a motherfucker off, technically, that's retaliation. But it's warranted. Don't go over the line with retaliation. I know somebody who recently, like, literally went out in a woods and retaliated on a fucking tree with an axe because they needed to get it out. And then they took p 
possessions from a really bad marriage and set them on fire. And that is an act of retaliation. And you know what? I was proud of her. Because fuck it. Retaliation is sometimes your boundaries reasserting. It's sometimes you don't get to push me around anymore. I am pushing back. And sometimes retaliation, and this is something I've learned from the most recent series of events, is people have been relying on the fact that I won't talk. That's factoring into their assumptions about how they are allowed to treat me. And that means they don't respect me. And I appreciate that. Maybe I acted in ways that didn't earn their respect, but I actually believe that it's more... When someone is strictly motivated through fear, they can't respect people because respect takes a certain amount of self-regulation and bravery, right? You have to go, that person's an asshole, but they're really good at what they do because respect continues even if you temporarily don't like someone or you find some of their behavior personally distasteful, right? There are a lot of people who are like, shit human being, great writer, Roald Dahl, right? Respect the writing accomplishment. Shit human being, right? Do I respect him as a human? No. Do I respect his creative output? Yes. And similarly, J.K. Rowling, shit human. Likely profoundly mentally ill, but also shit human. But she wrote seven books and the last few were a book a year. I respect that because George R. R. Martin can't get off his ass, right? That's how it works. And respect, maintaining your self-respect and therefore respect for other people, respect for boundaries, respect for right and wrong, that's what prevents you from going overboard in the retaliation, right? This is what the article says. Being betrayed is incredibly hurtful and you might want to get back at the person who hurt you, but revenge is detrimental and you'll likely regret it later. Think about thinking about revenge interferes with your healing and leads to negative thoughts. And it's best to try and focus on something else. You might think they deserve punishment, but it won't improve the situation or help you feel better. That is bullshit. What is the whole point of someone going to jail? They get punished so the victims feel better. Right? But jail is also about paying a debt. There needs to be consequences. There needs to be something the person who fucked around and find out does to even the scales. Saying, I made a mistake and I'm sorry, but I was afraid. That's not contrition. That's that's not going to save their soul. And, and that's really what it is. Justice isn't about isn't about making someone suffer. It's paying back their debt to society. And they have actually found that restorative justice tactics where, you know, they've done this where sexual assaults on, on college campuses did an experiment with this and it was actually fairly compelling that sometimes all the victim wants to be able to do is sit their abuser down and there's a set time limit and that victim can say whatever they want to their abuser and the abuser cannot speak. Oh, that's bullying. No, it's not. It's it's compensation because there's a time limit. They can't do it forever. The person who fucked up knows it's going to end. Now, that isn't necessarily going to make someone else feel better. Some people need charges. Some people... And and the thing is, you can't control what the courts are going to do. It's really detrimental to need someone to go to prison for you to feel better and for you to feel safe because we we work in a system, and I agree with this system, that allegedly prevents innocent people from going to jail allegedly then you know guilty people always being locked up there's a reason for that 
And so you don't have to be all nice. If you want to get up in someone's face, you know, how many breakup albums have there been? You know, Taylor Swift writes a damn song about every single one of, of her exes. Um, is that retaliatory? Sure. But who was that manager? The fucked her around so she had to re-record all her masters? Scooter Braun? Something like that? Did he deserve that shit? Hell yes, he did. Sometimes retaliation is okay. Sometimes it's healthy. It's just, it's that making sure you won't regret it thing. And if you're doing something damaging to yourself by retaliating, you really have to look at whether that's retaliating against the person who hurt you or whether it's an act of punishing yourself because you blame yourself for what happened. You know, you're John Wicking that shit. And, you know, he can't stop because every movie is like, why aren't I dead yet? How many cars have I been hit by? How many roofs have I fallen off of? Why aren't I dead yet? Wonderful metaphor for the whole, you know, the problems with with revenge fantasy, right? Score settling, as long as it's just settling the score, as long as it's getting back to even, that could be healthy sometimes. Like, you know, like my friend who took it out on a tree. Um, and uh, then <laughs> set fire to the memory. <laughs> so good. I've, I've done that. There is something so healing about watching something burn and you get all these people who are like well that's just revenge that's unhealthy that's a negativity fuck it does it make you feel better the most important thing is getting back to feeling like yourself getting back to boundary integrity because betrayal is all about a violation of boundaries, a gross violation of boundaries. And trust is one of those things. If somebody is acting all indignant after they broke your trust, get rid of that person immediately and set fire to every bridge behind you. Because they'll do it again. And sometimes just clapping back not taking it can be a real sign. You are not allowed to mess with me. You know, it's like the whole Johnny Depp thing in the trial. High profile trial where, you know, things like Megapints. He didn't come out looking great in that trial. She just ended up being worse. And he told the truth, which was messy. And that's the thing, like one person on yesterday's video said, this doesn't make either of you look good, you know? Um, and it's like, you know what? You're right, but that's the point, right? I have to look a little bad to get the truth out because the truth is I'm not perfect. And if I tried to come out totally smelling like a rose, it, it wouldn't be honest. You know, I am angry. And I, the very fact that I had to do that b to protect myself, because we all know the, the internet is whoever gets their story out first tends to be the one who wins unless the story falls apart, right? That's unfortunate. But if somebody gets out ahead of you, you often don't have a chance to defend yourself. And, you know, in my case, the reality was this is someone who told stupid lies to never admit anything difficult and selling the people closest to her out. And I did that knowing some people are going to say, 
that's undignified. And that's fine. And that's what it's all about. It's about getting your dignity back. It's about getting the sense that people can't just do this to you back. And without breaking the law, right again, avoid regret. But do I regret anything? I don't. I actually, that video yesterday, I let uh, a few people watch it before I put it up saying, am I over the line anywhere here? And they're all like, that was pretty fair, all things considering. And so it's like, all right, these, these people I trust to tell me when something's not good. <clears throat> Irony. Um, and that's why I trust them. Right, they would tell me if they thought it was over the line because they knew I meant it when I'm saying if there's anything you guys aren't comfortable with here, I'm going to pull it, right? Because that's me saying the relationships I have are more important than the relationships I don't have anymore. And that makes me a trustworthy person. And doing that act of considering others who haven't fucked me over that was healing right putting wanting to tell my side wanting to be honest finally being able to talk about something because I wasn't muzzled by some sort of confidentiality requirement I needed that but I also needed to do it in a way that wasn't gonna fuck up anybody who's been there for me so that was, and you know, there were some people who were, were rattled by it. And unfortunately, there were some people I couldn't tell because various politics, they had to have plausible deniability. And that's hard. That's the problem with betrayal is that it has ripples. And someone's going to betray you is never really going to own it. Because that's a character thing, right? Either somebody's capable of that or they aren't. And when someone shows you who they are, believe them. There are some people who, if they're pissed at you, they will tell you. If they don't like something you did, they'll tell you so you can work it out. And then there's people who will pull shit. And the choice somebody makes there, you know, unless you're an abusive bully, is not about you. It's about them, right? And no matter what excuse they give about why they did it, you know, you know how you would have reacted if you're remotely self-aware, right? And if you conduct yourself with integrity, this is, the, this is a really important point, so I saved it the last. If you conduct yourself with integrity, betrayal is easier. Because you didn't sell your soul for the motherfucker. You have enough of yourself left that it's like, I can do without that piece they took. I'll regrow something else. It won't be the same. It'll be just as good. It'll probably be better. Right? Because if you behave in a way that you can look yourself in the mirror and go, you know what, that was unpopular, but I stand by doing it. That's, it's a good feeling. You can draw strength from that feeling. So, you know, the best way to insulate yourself against betrayal is to live a life of integrity. Because then you know that the shit the betrayer says about you to try to cover their own ass and get out of feeling responsible for what they did you know it's not true you know it's not true you know what was in your head and it wasn't what they claim and they always always go after their their accusations of your intentions which they can't know only you can know they can only guess so integrity behaving with integrity is essential to getting over betrayal. You want to retaliate? Do it with integrity. 
You don't want to forgive. Do it with integrity. Sometimes integrity means you cannot forgive the person until they earn that fucking forgiveness. Because integrity is not just about, you know, being a good person. Integrity means wholeness, right? And if there's a piece missing from you, and there's a way to, for them to put that piece back, to return the piece they took, they should absolutely want to do that. And if their pride won't let them, or they're too arrogant, or they're really not sorry, that has everything to do with them and nothing to do with you. And that realization, that truth, that you were like, yeah, there's a way you can fix this, and they refuse, that's on them, not you. And that realization is the piece you can put that in the hole they left. You gave them an option. Was it a fair option? Yes, no, right? Fair option? Yeah, you gave them a fair option. They didn't take it. That's on them. You can walk away with your head held high. Okay? And, you know, uh, Eileen's aunt's crowdfund, super important. We're going to do this again. We're going to announce how much money is is going to it uh, on Friday. Yeah, I better transfer the money so it's there. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, we're doing this. We're getting closer. Spider-Man shit. Spider-Man shit. Um, thanks for watching and uh, be well.